Hi guys, welcome back. So today I just want to talk about creating our own kind of animate on scroll uh, functionality. So you can see here when we scroll down the page, we get our divs fade in. Obviously the divs look really ugly, but I just want to show you how we can, you know, um, allow our browser to know where each uh, div element is. You can see when we scroll back up, the div there disappears. And yeah, it just comes back in when we scroll down to the relevant view pool. Okay, so also within this video, we also implement um, a throttle function. So what this does, just to give you an example, if I set this throttle down here to zero at the moment, what this does, so when we use the scroll event, obviously it fires off a load of events. Okay, you can see here, we get all these events fired and this obviously takes up a lot of um, CPU browser processing power. So what this throttle event does is we can limit the amount of um, times we trigger the function just to um, give our app better performance and save on you know all the CPU power we use triggering with the scroll event. So if we set, for example, the throttle to 500, you'll see we get a lot less events uh, triggered, okay? So, I mean, limit it to your your kind of taste, really, or what your, what your preferences are, but I find 50 milliseconds is the sweet spot for the delay. So we're going to talk about this throttling functionality and um, how to implement it. So yeah, I hope you enjoy, guys, and let's get going. Cheers. Okay, guys, so, um, I've got the three usual files loaded here. Um, we have our index.html file in here. I've just linked to our style sheet in the um, header section here. And you can see we have these four divs, okay? So each of the divs contains um, a heading and a, uh, a p tag with Laura Mipson text uh, included. And then the, all the divs have a class of AOS, okay? For animate on scroll. And then we have a script source tag down here with linking to our app.js file. Okay, so if we just go into our style.css, I've just done some really basic styling to our divs here, you can see I've set to the AOS, .aos for the uh, for each div, I'm positioning it relative to, to where they would usually be on the screen, and then top 80 pixels, we're starting at the top 80 pixels because we want to fade it up when we uh, when we trigger the active class on our divs, uh, we set the opacity to 1, um, it should be 0, sorry. Uh, just let's see for it first and then when we apply the active class we'll apply uh, the opacity of one to make them uh, viewable okay i'll just change that back for now so we can see and then i've got a height for each different 20 viewport heights a width of 40 percent padding of one rem just to give it some white space in in the actual divs and then we have a transition of the half a second ease out just give it kind of a smooth fade out effect when we bring it in and, and out and then we have a border just a solid black border, background color of gray, and I've just applied some margins, just to give it some white space around the div, okay? I've set this 50, 50 viewport height margin for the bottom section here, just so we have some nice space to scroll uh, down the page. And then when we apply the active class, you can see I'm just basically transforming and I'm moving the uh, div on the y-axis by minus 50 pixels to bring it up, fade it up, and then we're doing another transition of 0.5 seconds easing, okay? So really basic style in there. Now we just get to the uh, the main bulk of this uh, tutorial, which is the app.js, okay? So the first thing I wanna do here is I just wanna get an array of all of our um, sort of div elements on the screen, okay? So to do that, I'm just going to say, let AOS elements equal array.from, and we're going to use this document.createSelectorAll, and we're doing the .aos here. So if we console.log AOS elements, we'll see here in our, um, console we have our four divs listed here okay and then so what we need to do with this uh, scroll effect we need to have a way to identify when the div appears in our view pool okay so we need to know the positioning of each div and in order to, in order to do that there's a function called um, get bounding client rect so let's do that now we can just say aos elements dot for each and then we pass in the element here and then we can say, oh, you can here just say console.log elements dot get bounding client rect. Okay, so let's just comment that up. And then we, now we should have, as you can see here, we have our four divs here, and this function basically returns a positioning for each of our divs on the screen. Okay, so you can see here, this is our first div, we have the top value, right, left, height, 
okay? So that for this tutorial, we're just gonna be concerned with the top value, okay? As we're scrolling vertically on the page. So you can see this first div is 160 pixels from the top. The second div is 878 pixels and so on. Okay, so with this, kind of underneath here, we're going to create a function called is visible, okay? And that's going to take in an element. And then in this function, we're going to say const element div, and that's going to equal element dot get, uh, get bounding client rect, okay, as we did above. And then underneath this, we're going to say let distance from top, and that's going to equal, uh, we'll do minus 300, and I'll show you why we're doing this in a second. And then finally, underneath this, we're just going to say uh, return, uh, we're going to say element div dot top. Remember, we have access to the top value now as we use this get, get bound in client rect function here. And then we're going to say um, if that is, we're going to subtract the window dot inner height. And if that is less than the distance from top, do a question mark. This is um, a ternary operator here. And then we're just going to say return true, else return false. Okay, so what's happening here is we're saying if the element top position minus the uh, height of the window, which is the viewport here, and if that is less than the distance from the top, so in this case minus 300 pixels, we're going to say that the element is within our viewport. So we'll return true. If it's not meeting this criteria, then we'll return false. Okay, and then come underneath this, or oh, actually I'll go above this for now. We're just going to create another function here. And we're going to say call this scan elements. Okay, like so. Spell elements right. And then what this does is we take in, we can actually copy this here, this for each function here. We'll put that in our new scan elements function. We're saying AOS elements for each element. We're going to say if element, or sorry, if is visible using that function we just created, passing the element. We're going to say element dot class list dot add, um, and we'll add the active class. So that's if it is visible. Else, coming after this, if it's not visible, we'll say element dot class list dot remove active, like so. Okay. And now what we need to do is we need to add a scroll event listener to our window so we can listen out for, so we can run this uh, scan elements function when we scroll the page, okay? So we're going to say window dot add event listener, listener for a scroll, and then here we trigger the scan elements function. So now if I just come back to my CSS, we'll change the opacity back to zero. When we scroll on the page, we should get this uh, hover or fade in effect for each div when we do. Okay, so that's working. Um, however, there is a problem with this approach. Okay, so if I just come in back in here, this scan elements function, we'll do a console.count e. What you'll see here, I need to pass in the event there, the function. You'll see here we're getting quite a lot of events that just trigger straight away. Okay, so for each of the pixels we scroll, we, we're getting like a lot of events fired. Okay, so that's very CPU intensive. I mean, it'll work for this kind of when there's basically this is all that's going on on this page, but if you have like multiple APIs firing and loads of different uh, better animations, it's gonna you know take up a lot of processing and we'll get a lot of kind of rough, um, jagged uh, transitions and animations. Okay. So what we need to do here is actually throttle this um, this scan elements function, okay? And what throttle means is, is that we trigger it only a certain number of times per time frame, okay? So this is, for example, now it's just triggering, triggering for each scroll event. We don't want to have, we just want this uh, to trigger, say, every 50 milliseconds or every 100 milliseconds, that kind of thing, just to stop it, just to limit it, basically, just to give our CP, our browser a bit of a, bit of respite really okay so in order to do that we're going to come under this uh, is visible function we're going to create a new function called throttle okay and this is going to take in another function 
in this case going to pass in this scan elements function up here as well as a delay time okay this is the the, the number of milliseconds we're going to uh, set the interval to um, run this function when we uh, use the scroll event okay and then the first thing we want to do here is set a variable called last call okay and that's going to start off by equaling zero and then underneath that we're going to return uh, a function okay an anonymous function we can pass in the arguments here to this function and then do an arrow function after this and within this returned anonymous function we're going to set a context variable and that's going to equal this and then underneath this we're going to say let current equals new date dot get time okay like so so what this does this just um, returns the current time so if i just go to our console here just say console.log you'll see we just get out the current time here okay in milliseconds so next we want to do here is just um come underneath this current we're going to say if current um minus the last call is less than the delay time we're just going to return out of this function okay we don't want to trigger the function uh, the, the scan elements function we just want to return out of this do nothing okay otherwise we're just going to say last call equals current and then we're going to say return function that function we pass in dot apply we're going to apply the context and the arguments Okay, so let me try to explain what's going on here. It's quite confusing this. This is using like kind of closures and stuff. And this is uh, quite an advanced topic. But what we're doing here is we're saying let last call equals zero. So that's the last time we call a function. Obviously the first time we call it, um, it will start at zero. And then what we're doing is we're adding context. We're saying let context equals this. And what this is doing is just basically getting all the elements of the page, okay, for this function that we use. So that we include our div elements. And then we're saying here, let current equals, this is the current time, which I showed you in the console a minute ago. And what we're saying here is if the current time minus the last call time, which in the first case is zero, is less than the delay, which of course, the first, if we pass in say, for example, a delay of 50 milliseconds, obviously the first time um, we run this function, this isn't gonna be true, because current's like quite a big number there, as you saw in the console. So we're gonna skip over this part and then we're going to set the last call variable to the current time. And then we're going to return the function. We're going to run it. So in this case, it will be the scan elements function, which we pass in. And we're just going to apply the, um, the HTML context as well as any arguments to pass in. These arguments aren't that important for this, but this is a function I've got off the internet. So I'm just including them in, them in this tutorial. Okay, so I hope that makes sense. I can try and explain better if you have any questions in the comments, but as I said, it's quite an advanced subject. So what we do here is we add now add this throttle function to our scan element section here. Okay, so we say throttle, and then we add the scan elements, and then we add the time we want to um, sort of delay or trigger the time interval we want to trigger the function. Okay, so I'm just going to say here uh, we start off really slowly, so five thousand milliseconds or five seconds okay so now if we come back to our console should be args come back to our console you'll see now that we're not getting that console log that much anymore it's taking five seconds to trigger the log and you can see that our fading is very kind of delayed so let's just bring this down a sec. Let's uh, bring this down to say 50 milliseconds, okay? So now you'll see we don't get as many logs anymore and we still, this is basically throttle it. So the, the function, the scan elements function is only being triggered once every 50 milliseconds, okay? So this just um, obviously stops the function triggering for every scroll event. You can uh, obviously, uh, make, let's make this a bit uh, longer. So we'll say, I don't know, one, one second. And there you go, you can see we get nowhere near as many functions, okay? Obviously, the longer you leave it, the less, obviously, the um, it takes longer for the delay effect to come in. So I think the sweet spot is probably around 50 milliseconds, okay? And then you see it's kind of, you 
can see it's still a human wouldn't really notice it if a user wouldn't notice this this uh, kind of delayed or throttling okay so that's just how you can kind of increase your app's performance and conserve like processing power um it's recommended though that you don't use your own throttle function okay there's a very popular um version out there by uh, this lodash uh, so they have a, a throttle function um and all you have to do here is i'm just gonna i've got the cdn which is here if i just get the min version uh we'll copy this copy url i'm going to paste this in my html so make sure it's above our script oh. Let's copy the uh, HTML here. Okay, so we have the uh, CDN. And then all we have to do, if we come back to the uh, documentation, is with my throttle function, uh, their throttle function, they just have a underscore and a dot before. So we can just change ours to underscore dot. And again, if I set it to 5,000, so five seconds, you can see that kind of... Uh, Oh, it's still working so this is a this is like a, a well-known version a well-known throttle function which is used by many applications so i trust this version more than my version to be honest but yeah that's just um a quick overview guys on how to one implement your own animate on scroll uh, functionality to your website without using the kind of aos uh, tools that are out there and also just to cover the uh, throttling function as well um, I hope you learned something. Any questions, give me a shout in the comments. And yeah, thanks for watching, guys, and I'll see you in the next video. Cheers.